Hello, my name is Charlie Kepler. I'm a flight engineer here at Headwall Photonics. I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step procedure of how to fly a hyperspectral sensor. First thing you're going to want to do is power on the UAV. So you're going to press once and then press and hold the battery. Turning on one battery will turn on all six. It's going to make a startup noise in a second. Once the UAV is on, then you can turn on the gimbal. Same thing, press once and then press and hold. You should hold the sensor in its forward facing position as it's starting up, and then you can feel it take over. Make sure you remove the lens cap, and then you can turn on the remote control as well. Make sure the tablet is turned on and uh, on the home screen and plugged in with a USB cable. Once it powers up, it will recognize um, that there are a couple different apps that you can use. We're going to use UGCS for DJI, so click that and then say just once, and the application will launch. Next, you're going to plug in the Ethernet cable to the front of the hyperspectral sensor, and then into your computer. Once you see the green LED on the front of the Nano Hyperspec sensor light up, uh, then you can launch the Hyperspec 3 software on the computer. And start with the Live Video tab. You're going to then rotate the sensor downwards so that it's facing a white reference. Uh, in this case, a piece of PVC board. It could be a white piece of paper, a piece of Spectralon, something that's brighter than anything you're going to be seeing in your scene. Now that we are pointing the sensor at the white reference, uh, we're going to look at this bell curve and we're going to manipulate the exposure such that the top of this bell curve is approximately 3,000 to 3,500 counts. If I hover over here, I'm at 3614, so I'm gonna make it a little bit less. Now I'm at 3,200, so that is acceptable. I'll make my exposure, the, or my frame period, the same amount. And now I'm gonna check the FOV calculator to figure out my speed. First, we're going to input our altitude, which is our distance to object, which today will be 30 meters. And then it'll output the speed based on those previous parameters in meters per second. And in this case, we want to fly at 4.11 meters per second. So I'm going to open up UGCS. I have a flight plan pre-configured here, and I'm going to input that speed. Usually, I like to make it a little bit less than what is uh, prompted just in case that there's a gust of wind or something that speeds the drone up accidentally for a brief moment. Uh, so I'll set it at four instead of 4.11. Once that is set, I'm good to upload to the tablet. Watch on the tablet screen as it counts up from zero to 100%. Once it reaches 100%, it'll flash green saying route uploaded. I'm going to go back to Hyperspec 3 and close out of the live video tab and work my way down now to the nano, the nano GPS tab. I'm going to click import polygon file, browse to a location that has my KML or text file, and upload it. The small white X is our location. Uh, in this instance, I have a polygon that has two uh, rectangular areas. Uh, one is the area where I'll place the tarp, and then one is our collection area. Over here, you see altitude, latitude, longitude, roll pitch, yaw, and a few other parameters being populated. Uh, velocity is all zero because it is sitting still. Um, and so I'm happy with this, so I can close out of the GPS tab. We're gonna skip this calibration tab. That's only used for lab-based sensors. And we're gonna jump into this capture tab. And I wanna do is give it a unique name. And then I wanna place the lens cap over the lens. So we're gonna take a dark reference of a thousand frames inside of the lens cap to be used as a dark subtraction later on in our processing. So I'm gonna click this checkbox, collect dark 1000 frames in one cube, and then click go. You see it notice it adds this underscore dark to the end. Should take about four and a half seconds since it's 4.5 milliseconds per frame times 1,000 frames. And now you see we have finished. Make sure to delete the underscore dark. 
This time click enable GPS triggering, make sure that active polygons is one or however many you've inputted. Um, we're gonna leave frames per cube at 2000. This is how many lines are going to make up an individual cube. And then max number of cubes zero, that means infinity. Uh, and then the exposure and frame period are pulled in from that live video tab, which we decided before. Once I'm happy here, I can click go. It's gonna take a second and then all of a sudden the pause icon is gonna show up on the left if I'm outside of the capture area. Once I see this pause icon, I can disconnect the ethernet cable and remove the lens cap. I then want to face the sensor nader straight down. And then I can place the sensor in its takeoff location. To turn on the rotors, you're going to hold both sticks down into the middle for about a second or two, and then release. Once they fully turned on, then you can hold the left stick straight up to launch. The legs will automatically go up, and then you can raise to a safe altitude. In this case, I'll go to around 40 meters. Now I'm gonna do my GPS initialization flight where I fly uh, in one direction for 100 meters or 10 seconds as fast as I can, do a rounded turn, and then fly back 100 meters or 10 seconds, and then I'll do a figure eight or two. Once your drone is flying the mission, you can basically just keep an eye on it, make sure that it's doing everything as you expect, but you don't need to touch any controls. You can kind of let it take over and do its own thing. Once the route finishes, it'll reach its last waypoint, stop and hover, and then it'll flash route ended on the screen, and then you have full control again, and it can take over and land. So I'll put the legs down. and then drop the drone down to the ground. Hold the left stick straight down to turn off the rotors. Now that we're finished with our flight, the next step is to stop the capture offload the data and then head into our processing. Once you're done with your flight, bring the UAV back inside or to a place to download the data. We're going to tilt the sensor up and then plug in the ethernet cable. We're going to then open back up Hyperspec 3 software. It takes 20 to 30 seconds for it to connect. And once it will, um, we'll see the go or the stop symbol light up. And I can click stop. Now I can go into file transfer, select the file along with the dark. I want to unpack raw cubes and create cube images. And then I can click transfer.